All right, here we are under the hood of our 2020 through 2021 Ford Power Stroke. We're going to walk you through the installation steps of the brand new EZX module for this application. This video will also be used for the 2022 Power Stroke, with the only difference in the installation being inside the cab where we connect to one of the CAN bus lines. Under the hood, everything between the 2020 through 2022 is the same. So to start this installation off, we need to start by disconnecting our negative battery terminals on both batteries. Uh, this is done with a simple 10 millimeter socket on the end of a quarter inch ratchet. You can disconnect the battery terminal, make sure that we're not touching the battery posts so that the vehicle has no power whatsoever. We're gonna start by connecting into our mass airflow sensor that's located right here on the back side of the factory air box. On the bottom side of that connector, there'll be a red keeper that needs to be pulled backwards so that you can then depress the tab on the connector and disconnect it. The EZX harness that's supplied with the new module will have a direct connect connection connection for this location. We're going to plug it in until it clicks, and then there is a red keeper on our wiring harness as well. And then you will connect the other end of the harness to the factory trucks harness and close that keeper there as well. Once our installation is completed, we'll go back and route this wiring harness nice away from any of the heat sources, away from any moving parts. We can zip tie it right up here to the cowl nice and tight. Uh, we'll do that once the complete installation is done. Next, we're gonna move on to our map sensor, which is located on the top of the factory intake plenum, right below the cowl. This one is a little bit tougher to get to, but you'll see it right here at the top of the intake plenum that's feeding air to the cylinder heads. On the 2020 and newer trucks, Ford started installing a metal bracket over that map sensor. So we need to remove that bracket so that we can get access to the connector itself. This is done with that same quarter inch ratchet, but an eight millimeter socket. And we basically just need to loosen the two bolts that hold that bracket on. The front one is super simple to get to. The rear one is a little bit more of a challenge due to the space constraints from this cowl. Uh, but once you get that bolt broke loose, you can thread it out with your fingertips. And then we can remove that bracket altogether. All right, here we are looking at the map sensor here with that bracket removed up from above it. On the top of this sensor, you'll see a white keeper that we need to disconnect by pulling it straight back and then we can get our thumb on it to depress and get that map sensor disconnected. That EZX harness we were talking about before will have a another plug that will go directly in line with that map sensor. Again one end right on to the sensor itself. Again there's a keeper on it to keep it connected and then the other end of the harness will plug together. So, again, make sure you close that keeper so that it stays connected. Now we'll move over to the fuel rail pressure that's located on the driver's side cylinder head. All right, so now we've moved over to the driver's side of the engine. We're gonna show you how to locate that fuel rail pressure sensor. Now in the instructions, it states that it's located between your coolant reservoir uh, and the alternator and the front of the engine. So basically, if we peek down right through here past our power steering reservoir and past the radiator hose. Try and get a good, good shot of it here. You can see the light shining on it right, right here on the front of the engine, right beside your alternator. Here it is zoomed in on it. That sensor right here is our fuel rail pressure sensor. We need to disconnect that connector the detent tab that you need to press to get it to come loose is on the bottom side of that connector, but you can get really easy access to that sensor with your hand just by simply reaching right here between the power steering reservoir and under the coolant hoses. So we can go ahead and get that disconnected and then we will plug in our fuel rail pressure pigtails directly into that harness like we did with our MAP and our MAF sensors. Okay, with our fuel rail pressure connected, down on that side of the engine. We now need to run the rest of our harness into the cab of the truck. As you can see, we've got some rather large connectors. They're gonna be really tough to pass through that firewall. So in our harness, we have built in a small access link here that can just be disconnected. 
And then the large portion of that harness can be taken into the cab of the truck. And we will only need to pass through this small six pin connector through the firewall. Now on this particular Ford truck, there is a nice sized grommet that's easily accessed right down through here. And we'll be able to cut a small slit in that grommet and pass this connector right through there. Now we'll move into the cab of the truck and start the connections inside the floorboard area. All right, we've moved into the cab of the truck and we're looking at the accelerator pedal here. This connection right here at the top of our accelerator pedal is where we'll connect. Again, we've got a red keeper to disconnect. We can depress and unplug the Easy X module. We'll pull it direct in line with that sensor. One end to the pedal. One end into the harness. Again, closing our keepers. And then we will zip tie these wires up out of the way. And we'll move over to our CAN bus connection. All right, to get onto our CAN bus line, we're gonna connect into this connector that's right here on the back side of the OBD2 port, right above the brake pedal. This one is simple by just depressing the tab that's on the bottom side of that connector and wiggling it out and then plugging in our Easy X harness. Making sure it clicks like so. The other end into that OBD connector. And then we're going to go ahead and connect that six pin wire we ran through the firewall earlier. And then we can install the Easy X module itself as the last connection of this installation. By simply plugging the module in. And then there is double side Velcro that's included in the kit so that we can mount the module right here on the side of the emergency brake pedal bracket. At that point, we can reconnect our negative battery terminals and we can move on to our phone app where we can control some of the features and set up the different settings for tire size, TPMS adjustments and such. On the 2022 model Power Stroke, the CAN bus line is actually accessed behind the glove box on the passenger side of the truck. So we will not be connecting behind the OBD port like on the 2020 through 2021 models. So the Easy X harness will need to be routed behind your center console up in the dash. You can basically route it directly through here. And then we will move over to the glove box and show you where to connect over there. So here we are at the glove box. We need to open it. And we first need to remove this mechanism that's right here on the side of the glove box. That helps with the slow open of the door. And then there are two D presses that we need to press in with our hands, one on this side and one on the far side. But first to remove this mechanism, you basically just need to pull it forward towards the face of the glove box to click it out of its home. And then it can just be pulled outwards which will remove it from the location. Once it's out of the way, you can see how that location is. So you basically just need to slide it out of the small portion of that hole so that the, it can pull itself out. And then you basically just need to press on this depress right here with, a, with your finger. And then there's one right here on the very top of the box. And you can just push those in and then the whole box will drop down. All right, so we've got the jockey box dropped down and you can see these connectors right here. They're directly behind it. There are three of them, four of them that are mounted vertically. We need to connect to this one closest to the driver's seat. We've got our Easy X harness routed behind the dash. And to disconnect this, there is a deep press up on top that you need to get your fingernail in on and then that connector can just pull directly up and out. The lower portion of that connector is mounted to a plastic tab, which makes things a little bit easier actually. So then with the 
new EZX harness will basically plug directly in line with the original so that it clicks and then the other end of that harness will connect to itself just like so and then we just need to make sure that our wire is routed behind so that we can push the glove box back into place. Now with our connection made there on that CAN bus line right here, we can close the glove box back up. And we've got this rubber keeper on this side, and then there is one right here on the top of the other side. Those need to be pressed back in so that we can get past the, the upper mounts. Once that's done, we just need to reconnect this mechanism that helps with that slow open. Again, it just needs to press into that large portion of that hole and then just slide it backwards with your thumb to latch it into the smaller portion. Once that's done, we can move on to the next step of the EZX install. Okay, so now we need to set up our smartphone app. So once we've downloaded the smartphone app from the Google Play Store or from the App Store through Apple, we've got the app here on our phone. We need to get the key in the ignition. We'll turn the ignition on without starting the truck. And then we can go ahead and open our EZX app. You can see it's gonna start searching for the device. Now our app has located the device that's mounted under the dash. Um, we are about two feet away from that module. If you cannot get your phone to connect, it would help to move the phone closer to that module. Once it's connected, the, the app should work from anywhere in the cab. So sitting in the driver's seat, you'll have no problem running the app with the vehicle. But at this point, we can kind of walk through the app itself. You can see that we've got our power levels, tire size, gear ratio, TPMS adjustments. We can enable our high beams to stay on with our fog beams. And then we can also turn on our engine coolant protection. So this basically just allows the module to not add any power until you get up to an operating temperature with your coolant. It will also derate power if your coolant temperature gets too hot. So it's just kind of a safety feature that's built in. We can also do a DPF manual regen. We can go in and check our diagnostics. And then we can also set high idle features through the app itself. So with our power levels, uh, this can be controlled through the steering wheel using our cruise control button. So when our cruise control is off, you can use your uh, cruise control up and cruise control down buttons to turn those power levels up and down. But the nice thing with the, the app itself is we can go in to that power level feature. You can see that it's found it. The module is currently in power level five. We can change those power levels here with the app or through the steering wheel. But in the app itself, we can actually go in and edit that power level so we can change the throttle pedal sensitivity of every power level. So if you're someone that likes a really touchy pedal, but you like the lower power levels, we can set level two to have that extreme uh, sensitivity or vice versa. If the extreme setting number five setting power level uh, is a little too touchy for your daily driving, you can go in and turn down the sensitivity of that pedal to any one that you prefer. So that's a, a nice feature that's allowed you to control right here in the app. Once you set that, it will remember it from the uh, moving forward in the future, anytime you have the device on and driving the truck. Tire size adjustment. This is so we can calibrate our speedometer for the tire size on the truck. We need to input our stock tire size, and then we can input our modified tire size. The one thing to note is that the modified tire size needs to be your exact tire height. So even though this truck is running a 37, 13, 50, measured with a tape measure, these tires mounted and balance only stand about 35, 50 tall. So we need to input that 35, 50 to get the most accurate speedometer reading. Once we've input our stock and our modified tire size, we can tell it to update and then our speedometer should read correctly. Gear ratio, the same thing. If you've changed your ring and pinion, pinion because you've put a big set of tires on it, some 40 inch tires, and you've changed from the factory 355 to a 410 or something like that, you can go in and change that gear ratio right here. That's not something that's gonna need to be changed unless you physically change the ring and pinion. 
um, the TPMS settings. This is so that we can go in and change the, the threshold at, at what triggers the light on the dash. So if you've installed that aftermarket set of wheels and tires, we can go in and change what PSI we want that threshold to be set at. So instead of having the factory, I believe it's 65 PSI, you can turn that down a bunch to change that. We can also disable the TPMS settings altogether. So if your aftermarket wheel and wheels and tires don't have TPMS sensors in them, we can turn that system off altogether so that there's no light on the dash at any time. We talked about the fog beams with our highs. We talked about engine cold protection, DPF regen. We can go in and do a manual regen process. And then our diagnostics will go in and read and clear any trouble codes that are in the truck. So if you have a check engine light that pops up, you can use this device to read what that code is. Um, we can also check our emissions readiness. So if you're somewhere that does emissions testing, uh, you can go in and check this and it'll let you know if it, the emissions readiness monitors are set in the vehicle. So before you get to your emissions testing center, you know that all of the, the checksums are ready so that they can test it properly and you don't have to come back or drive the vehicle a bunch more miles to get those to set before you do your testing. It's a really nice feature. And then we've got our high idle. With this feature, we can enable the high idle when the, it, when the truck is in park. Um, we can change the high idle settings. So if it's a cold winter, cold morning, you can actually manual idle up that engine to let it run. And then just depressing the brake will turn that uh, high idle off. All right, so changing power levels and the high idle feature through the steering wheel is very simple. So when we're driving the truck, as long as our cruise control is disabled, uh, you can use your set plus and your set minus buttons on the steering wheel to turn the power levels up and down. The dash will display the power level that you're running and you can see it change as you're pressing the buttons to change power levels. And then anytime the vehicle is in park, we're not driving, the set plus and set minus buttons will actually enable cruise control, or I'm sorry, uh, high idle feature. So if you're in a cold climate, want the engine to warm up and to get the, the in cabin heat blowing hotter sooner, we can idle the, in, the engine up to a higher RPM. Same thing in a summer climate, if you want that AC to start blowing cold, we can idle up. And then anytime we depress the brake pedal, it'll automatically disable that high idle feature and go back to its regular idle. So that kind of walks you through the installation and all the feature sets of the Easy X and the app. It's very user friendly, easy to install. Um, really for a first timer, this is a 20, 30 minute install. It's all direct plug and play. There's no modifications that need to be made to the vehicle. And because we're not flashing the ECM, this works really well for a new vehicle that's still got uh, dealer services that need to be done. If you ever need to remove the EZX, it's as simple as just unplugging those connectors, plugging everything back in as stock and there's no trace left in the system. So this product was developed for the average diesel owner, daily driver, someone that does a lot of towing, um, you know, it's a modest 60 horsepower gain, but it's definitely something you'll feel from the driver's seat. I mean, towing a heavy load, the improvement in throttle pedal sensitivity, and that low end torque is something you will definitely notice when you're driving the vehicle. You may even see some fuel mileage improvements if your driving habits don't change, which can be tough when you get that extra power. A lot of guys want to use more throttle. But as long as you keep your driving habits consistent, your regen frequency and your fuel mileage should stay the same as stock, if not better in some situations. Um, you can also pair the EZX with our Insight CTS3, so you can keep an eye on what's going on under the hood, keep an eye on your EGTs, your DPF regens, all that kind of stuff. So the Insight does work in conjunction with the EZX. They do not work together, so there's no uh, functionality through the Insight that controls the EZX. It's, the EZX is still controlled just through your steering wheel or through the app, but pairing it with an Insight does give you some nice visibility of what's going on with the truck. Um, so we do sell that as a kit, the EZX and the Insight together. It does also include the A-pillar mount that holds the Insight, um, but we do sell the EZX as a standalone unit for those guys that don't want the monitor or for the guys that already have a monitor. Um, they do work really well together. The other thing to note is that this product is kind of catered for that average owner that just wants a little bit more out of their vehicle. It really changes the way it drives. The throttle pedal sensitivity and that low end torque, it just makes the vehicle feel lighter, accelerates better. I mean, daily driving, it's a whole new vehicle. You will definitely feel a difference. Again, this video covers the installation of the EZX 12711 for the 2020 through 2021 Ford Power Stroke and the 12712 
for the 2022 Ford Power Stroke. If you have any other questions, obviously feel free to reach out to our Edge Products tech support um, or visit us on social media or even stop by your local authorized Edge Products dealers for more information about the EZX. Uh, we always love getting feedback and we look forward to hearing from you.